Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of High Energy Girl, and today's guest is Katrina Rogers. She is a movement educator and facilitator. It is her mission to increase individual awareness, creation, and sustainability of body movement to re-educate, restore, and re-energize the body's natural alignment and movement patterns. Katrina is dedicated to encouraging individuals to envisioning their life beyond the scale and to see how much more fulfilling their life can be when they engage in the process and to take their journey one step at a time. She promotes physical movement and the movement of energy and ideas. She is the co-creator owner at In Love With Movement, and she is the founder and head coach of a nonprofit youth track and field club, Olympia Track Club, as well as the jumps coach at Castleview High School, assuming that is in Denver. She has a passion for dancing, so you will often see her out dancing various styles of dance throughout the week. You might even be lucky to catch one of her dance classes. She is an amazing girl, and I cannot wait for you to meet her. So let's go say hi to Katrina. You strive to keep your family healthy, bosses and employees happy, and the home life smooth. But now, it's It's time time to to focus focus on on you. you. This is High Energy Girl, a fun show focused on helping you get healthier and And feel feel amazing. amazing. It's time to ditch the excuses and start living your best life. Here's your guide to help you increase your energy and empower your life. Health coach and personal trainer, Tracy Gluheit. Give a woman a fish, feed her for a day. Teach a woman to fish, feed her for a lifetime. Teach a woman to teach a woman to fish, end world hunger. Have you ever wanted to help people improve their health journey? Have you thought about coaching people with a keto lifestyle? Would you like to become an integrative health coach? Well, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, or IIN as we call it, is the largest nutrition school in the country. And in 2011, I graduated from their program and became a health coach. It was completely awesome. We learned over a hundred different dietary theories and talk about craziness and confusion. My wish for you is that we can lock arms and create a tribe of health coaches all around the country, all around the world to spread the keto message. If this resonates with you and you would like to look into this option deeper, please go to my blog at highenergygirl.com and click on the link to the right of the homepage. Here you can grab the curriculum guide and see if it inspires you. Since I care so much about my listeners, I negotiated the very best tuition rate for you at IIN. Either you can contact them directly and give them my name, or I will introduce you to a counselor so you can decide if this is a good fit for you and your career goals. Let me know how I can support you in this coaching career opportunity. And don't forget to join our Facebook group, High Energy Girls. That way we can be in contact and chat every day. Hey, Katrina, thanks so much for coming on the show today, girl. Thanks so much, Tracy. I'm I'm so glad to be here. Well, I know that you are just full of health and wellness wisdom, so why don't you just tell our listeners a a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I am a movement specialist, and I have been in and around different forms of movement my whole life. I was a runner. I ran track and field both in high school and college. I'm also a dancer, more from the social aspect as compared to classical training, and now I am able to work with individuals over the age of 40 in particular on postural realignment in addition to being a track and field coach and I also instruct in dance. Gosh. Uh, That's just a little bit about me. (laughs) You are a busy girl. I am. I I am and I love what I do and I love really working with people and and helping people um, have a better relationship with their bodies and really understanding how alignment not only of their physical structures really do aid in helping people become aligned in their mental and spiritual lives. Okay. So that is what I want to unpack with you because that is super unique and I think it's super beneficial. So I'm in the dental space. Like I work with doctor, like doctors and you know, all of the assistants and hygienists and everybody in the dental office. And I know that, um, what you have to offer would help them as well as all of our listeners on the show. So can you start from the beginning with that? Like, how do you get your client? How do you help them? You know, just kind of unpack that whole thing. 
sure. I know it's a lot to do. And... <laughs> it is a lot. And, and, you know, everybody's going to be slightly different. And so really what I work with individuals, um, if you're coming in from a fitness perspective, if you're coming in because you have chronic pain, um, a lot of what I do is we're first looking at what is your posture, right? Give me your best posture, but go through. And then that tells me a lot about where you're holding tension, what muscles are holding tension. And in addition to that, we're having conversation. So you're telling me all about your life. You're telling me what's happening. And we start to see where there's stress is going on. Maybe there was a traumatic event that you're kind of holding on to. And so as we go through our assessment, I'm, I'm getting a lot of information. And not only am I doing a postural assignment, I'm, I'm, I'm also looking at how you move. And then we start looking at how is your body moving, right? And then understanding what is it that you do in your daily life? What are your repetitive movements? And then we put a plan together for you to help that. So on the exercise piece of that, we're giving you exercises to do throughout the day, throughout the week. You're coming in and, and seeing me and I'm helping you have that relationship with your body. So there are tapping techniques. There are meditative scanning techniques that I teach my clients. There's breathing techniques that I work with my clients on um, and various ways of keep bringing people back to their bodies that they can use me as an external feedback, but I really encourage my clients to tell me what's happening in their bodies. What are you feeling? What are you sensing? What's like, what, you know, what can we do to help you move differently? Right. I can look at you. I can play with you. I can touch your body, but at the end of the day, it is your body. You're going to be, you're going to be the best person to tell me what's going on. And so the more that I can help you and aid in that, and, and get you to constantly look inwards, the better. Huh. So what do you most common see? Do you see any patterns that show up the most often? For sure. I mean, this was, so a lot of things that we're looking at, a lot of people are driving, a lot of people are sitting at desks, a lot of people are on their phones. And so a lot of what I am seeing is rounded shoulders. I'm seeing um, heads that are like falling forward or like protruding forward. Um, really starting at a younger age, looking like they're 80 or 90, right? (laughs) (laughs) So you're really seeing a lot of very slumped over postures. And as you're talking to people, you're really seeing that they're carrying a lot of insecurities and a lot of fears about themselves and a lot of senses of maybe I'm unworthy or I don't want to try that. I'm not perfect enough. I don't know how to do that. And they don't want to try. And they're, and that's really is showing in their posture that they're not open in their posture to experience the world and allow things to come in. And so they're closing themselves off. Ah, so they're is physically that the, closing themselves off. So do you think one, like what came first, the physicality of it or the emotional side of it? it and I think it really depends on the person because okay. there are a lot of people that I speak one client who's an ex psychiatrist. And when you, when you speak to him, he's had an amazing life full of, um, full of activities. He has a great marriage even to this day after 30 years. He's raised wonderful kids and he's been very active, but he also was an adrenaline junkie at one point and, you know, mountain biking and climbing and he had a severe accident and overall his posture is, is pretty decent, right? He's, he's within a profession of helping in, in, in healing. And so kind of a very open person. However, there's some structural issues going on and when he engages in certain movements he's triggered Hmm. and so while his posture is there and I would say overall his posture is pretty decent there are some things that we're definitely working through and correcting now for him I would say the emotional piece caused a lot of his issues in his body right and then I think some people might have just been shy might have been bullied might have um not feel fully accepted and maybe over time their posture shifted. Yeah. Um, I think those are kind of a parallel thing in, in a way. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So I can understand the accident leading to, um, you know, trauma on the inside as well as the bullying leading to that. So, and then, um, so it sounds to me though, based on those descriptions that, 
Well, I guess they're totally different, but that's interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. So when you help a client, what kinds of things do you help them with? Like, is it strengthening, stretching? What kind of modalities do you use? I use multiple modalities. So a lot of it is going to come out of exercise science, but I, I do bring yoga into it. I bring um, Pilates exercises. Um, so we look at high, high intensity training. Um, the root of what I do, at least with my morning clients, Right. And I come out of the modality of NASM, which is the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And that's where I'm certified in through that. And so they have a protocol that we, we utilize where we, we look at the structural um, misalignments. We look at the muscle um, imbalances that you have that are causing this. And we focus on first loosening the muscles that are tight and strengthening the muscles that are weak to help you with that alignment piece. And so we're building stabilization. And so for me, this is my foundation work, right? I want you to have greater stability and to have greater a greater base to work on. And then we build from there, whether you want to have greater strength, whether you want to have greater mobility, whether you want to have greater flexibility, that is somewhat customizable in whatever you're trying to do. And so I'll, I'll pull different... Um, modalities. There are sometimes I have clients come in and we just need to shake things off. I will turn on music and we dance. Aww. <laughs> I love that. We dance. And, and so oftentimes I will utilize different ways of, you know, music will play a lot into what I do. I, I, I can kind of sense when the, the, the mood that people are in and kind of go, okay, so this is what this kind of music, this is what we need. Or, you know, maybe we just need to go for a walk and need to talk things out. And so there's a lot of things that I will do within my training that is really going to meet where you are at in that moment that is still facilitating growth. And I'm always encouraging um, all of my clients to go do the things that they thought that they couldn't do. Right? If they, you know, if we're working towards somebody feeling more comfortable hiking, or they are wanting to just not be uncomfortable in public, sitting and standing, you know. So as we age, that is certainly a thing that we start having cricks and we moan. And and so if I can get your body feeling better, that's one less thing you have to worry about. That you know that you can sit down and play with the grandkids, and you know that you can stand right up real quickly and and move around. And and so. Sessions with me are, are, you know, they're fun and they're, they're full of laughter and they're full of insightful conversations all the while that we're moving our bodies. Oh, I love it. And that yeah. probably makes them happy too, you know, music and movement yeah. and dance and all that. That's good. Exactly. Which is, there's just another program that I'm really working on is actually um, to be able to bring dance into um, kind of more of a therapeutic group setting. Um, for individuals here in Denver, where we're going to look at partner dancing as a way of understanding our ourselves and how we relate to people from a leading and following um, sort of mindset. Oh, that would be cool. There, have you heard of? I think it's called Silver Sneakers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a great um, program that is that's nationwide for um, older individuals, and and there's different programs within the Silver Sneakers, um, you know, umbrella. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah that's, they, that's... they wanted me to teach at one of the um, facilities here in town, but they just didn't have the budget for it, the facility mm. itself. And so, yeah, it didn't quite work out. But um, I think it's a great program for people. And like my mom and my stepdad, we just moved them into a senior living environment. And my mom is just so not strong, you know? And yeah. I'm like, mom, just do sit stands in your chair. Just sit yes. and stand, sit and stand, yep. you know, just the back to the functional movement. Exactly. I think the more people that kind of what you're saying is that the more that you're just moving, right? For me, movement is life. And that's, that's how I see it. That if you, the moment you stop moving is the moment you start dying. Mm -hmm. And, and I've experienced that when I was in my late twenties, early thirties, where I kind of went to a job. I came home, I sat and I watched television. I occasionally went out, but I didn't really do anything. So I sat in the car, I sat at work, I sat on the car home, I sat at home. Right. And so, and I could feel my body. I gained a lot of weight. I was extremely unhappy. And, um, 
I wasn't doing anything in my life. Like I was not, I was not active in my life. And so when we're talking about how to like, what's the secret to, you know, to aging and aging well and aging, um, with a sense of health and well being, I'm going to tell everybody, move your body, find something that is allowing you to be fulfilled where it's allowing you to engage with people engage on an intellectual perspective where you are exchanging energies on multiple planes. Yeah. And if you're doing that and you're creating your tribe in whatever way that looks like, you're going to feel connected. And, and that's, I think is really important is that, you know, cause the moment we stop, the moment we hide away, we start isolating ourselves and we start to have more dis-ease, more discomfort in our bodies. But the moment that we just start moving, and it's hard at first, it is really difficult, but you know, our bodies are smart. They're intelligent vessels that we, we live in, and we're so fortunate to have really amazing bodies um, that most of us just don't have, a, have an, actual, an actual relationship to. And... So, so to learn how to use our bodies as ways to help us make decisions, help us in and out of our day. Like, so if you have pain or discomfort, that means something's not right. Something is out of alignment. Now we can address it from the physical perspective, but we can also look at like, what are we not addressing in our lives? Mm -hmm. Do we have too much stress in our world? Do we feel like, particularly women, we have tons of stress in our shoulders, right? We feel like we have the weight of the world on us. And that's usually what the shoulders kind of mean. And so what are you feeling like you're carrying around with you? Whose burden? Mm. Yours or other people's? And so if we can look at the, use the physical body as the, the first indicator of like, hmm, I'm carrying tons of tension. I have my shoulders in my ears. I wonder what's going on in my life, right? What do I feel like I have to carry? Ooh, and I then can I that. actually remove it? That is a fantastic analogy, what you just said. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, seriously, because that's something that I think a lot of us don't even think about, you know? Yeah. So what other examples of that do you see frequently? <laughs> like that just blew, that you just rocked my world with that. Like the, Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, seriously, like what are you carrying? Because like there's so many parallels, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think the way in which if we use our bodies, so another, another great way of, of another tool that, that I love to teach people is listening to whether or not we're kind of leaning in or pulling away. Mm. Right. And, and this is a great instinctual intuitive tool that is, that is really just there all the time. Right. And so I'm constantly helping people learn when is there stopping movements in our bodies? Right. We have. And if I was to tell you just to say stop, I want you to pay attention to what your body does. Ideally, if you said stop even mentally or out loud, your hands probably went up in that in that manner of stop oh, without yeah. thinking about it. Right. And so the more that we can pay attention to when we're shaking our heads, no nodding our heads yes, right? Are we leaning back from people? Are we actually literally stepping away from, you know, maybe somebody's asking you, would you like to do this thing? And you're, you're going, yeah, but really your body's being pulled in the other direction. Oh, yeah. So there's some conflict there. Yeah, there's a sign, right? And that's also when we're, when we're paying attention to each other too, right? When are our actions out of alignment with our words? Uh, and those are, are those those are ways right that you can see somebody if you're asking them engaging in them and you're saying okay there's there's something amiss here what is it that's funny that you said that you reminded me of something somebody once said is what are your priorities in life you know ask them what their priorities are and then yep. how do they spend their time and yep. looking to see if those are aligned you know, so often we say we want this or these are our priorities. However, the way we spend our time is completely different. Yeah. So, you know, there's a contradiction there. And so when I'm working with clients, that is one of the ways, you know, especially when people are having a little trouble making training sessions, when I give them homework and they're not doing it. And then we start having conversation of what is holding you back? You know, what about this 
behavior is also understanding how is it serving you in the moment. Yeah. Because when we hold on to um, hold on to patterns and behaviors and habits, right? There's something else usually associated with that. There's some level of identity associated with with that. And so there's a fear wrapped around the unknown. And there's a fear of if I remove this, who am I? Hmm. Yeah, it could be and, frightening, right? Sometimes when they're yeah. holding on to Yeah, and if you've and if you've been holding on to this idea that you've 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 been victimized or that you've been bullied or that you've been injured, right? For whatever the reason, for so long, you know, you've had pain for so long. What would you be or who would you be if that pain was gone? Mm. Ah, I like that. That's a really good perspective because it helps them dream of their ideal situation. Yes. And let that go as an excuse. Yes. Mm. And, and sometimes it takes a little bit to let go, but if you can shift their brains to seeing the possibilities, right. To, to allow them to start seeing it and feeling it, that it, that it's actually possible and they get excited for that. And again, they start feeling this energy inside themselves of like, Oh yeah, I can do that. Then, then over time, what they were holding on to falls away. Right. And, and, they, and you release. And sometimes you, sometimes it's, you know, it's kind of, sometimes you release and you're like, Oh wow. I feel, I feel lighter. Right. I feel different. Um, so it's, so it's a lot of that paying attention to going to the words, going to the mental, going to the physical. And so a lot of times just within conversation in, in training, this is what comes out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good because it's actually a shift in their energy. And I always say like what you focus on is what you're going to experience. So if they focus on the pain, they're going to experience more pain. If they focus on Mm -hmm. what they truly want in their best life, then that's what they're going to experience. So Exactly. That's cool. Exactly. So what advice would you give um, somebody who wants to like kind of like what advice would you just give to our listeners? First of all, be kind to yourself. I think that's, I think that's really an important place to start is be kind to wherever you're at right now and know that it's never too late, right? Time is your construct and whatever you've been dreaming about, whatever you've been wanting to do, go do it and go do it now. Um, because the life happens when you start. Huh? Yeah, that's true. So move your bodies, find any activity that, that allows you to be engaged. It doesn't have to necessarily be in the gym, but if you want to go play volleyball, if you want to go on a hike, if you want to go, um, dance, go dance, go hike, go move, Mm -hmm. go, you know, go do something. Yeah. It's like, try a bunch of different things to see what you love the best. Yeah. And it's okay to do it by yourself. Um, you will find that, you know, there's just tons of people out there that that will bring you to the next thing. They'll bring you to the next thing and bring you to the next thing. And it's okay if you don't like it, it's okay for you to have preferences in, in that, in that exercise doesn't have to just be one way of looking at it. Right. I lost a lot of, um, my initial weight after I got divorced and, and kind of shifted my life. Swing dancing. Ah, and who can't have fun with that? I mean, think about it. I know. And I looked at it and went, okay, multiple days a week. I was dancing three to four or five hours, multiple nights a week. And so people look at me and go, well, what do you do for exercise? I go, I dance. Huh? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and try to be grumpy and dance at the same time. <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, and I, could, I can go on and on about how dance has affected my life and, and how I'm, I encourage everybody to dance. Um and, and I could even give that as advice. Go dance. Turn on music and dance. Let yourself move. Um, let yourself laugh. Let yourself be seen. And let yourself connect to people and yourself. And 
Um, you know, so, so I think those are the things is just find practices or habits that, that really allow you to be con- not only connected to who you are and, and to allow yourself to, to be seen and to connect to other people in really significant ways other than necessarily like social, um, electronic ways. Yeah. I love it. So if a person wanted to do like that type of dancing, if they want to do some swing dancing and all that, what would you tell, where, how would they find a place to do that? Um, so there's a lot of different, um, depending on where you're at, there's tons of social scenes that you could just look up swing dance, um, you know, San Francisco. You can look up blues dance San Francisco. You can look up salsa, bachata, zook fusion. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of dances out there there are lessons for it so if you just want to go take lessons um there's tons of different schools all over like i know denver has um you know most of our swing nights there's at least two major venues or three major venues that um do offer swing dances and then there's other smaller venues and and people that are doing either private and or group lessons um so you can certainly just search out swing dancing you can search out blues dancing you can search out bachata or or salsa um and and you will definitely find um opportunities there's a lot of schools like the universities that will often have like a club that is usually open to the public and most of these social dances will offer a lesson, either an hour or 30 minute lesson prior to the, the dance starting. A lot of times that's included in the price of the dance. Um, and sometimes it's a smaller, just an additional cost if there's different levels. There's tons of workshops for dancing. It's, it's an amazing world of that just brings people together from all aspects of life and all different levels of where they're at in their personal being and all ages. And I, and I repeat that all ages. I love it. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to be on my list. Now I've, I love to try new experiences. And one of my friends who I interviewed for the show, they have this thing because it's like, cause we do fun things or something like that, or we do mm-hmm. cool things. And she is always experiencing different fun things that they've never done before. And I love that idea to do dancing. Now here's a question. Do they need to have a partner to go find this or can they just go on their own? And then like there's people there that are also single that they can find a partner at the place. Yes. Most often, um, most dances you can go by yourself. Most lessons you can go by yourself. A lot of what they'll do is they will rotate, um, leads and follows. And so, even if you went with somebody, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to dance with them all night. You don't even have to dance with them for the whole lesson. Um, I can speak more to my scene and, and I know that we do that specifically. And like, if you go to salsa, even here in Denver, yeah, you can just show up and, you know, it's like raise your hand and be like, Hey, do you have a partner? You know, cool. Let's, let's learn this lesson together. I encourage you to go by yourself. Um, because it's going to allow you to, meet more people. It's going to allow you to engage as, as compared to just kind of holding on to your safety net. Oh, Though if that's what you need, I mean, by all means, bring more people out dancing. I'm not against that either. Um, but, you know, so, so the, what I loved and why I was really attracted to the social way of dancing happens is that I could go by myself. And I have met some of my closest friends to date dancing. Oh, cool. And I like it because my husband would never do it, but I think I would love it. I used to teach Zumba. Oh, fun. Yeah, I used to teach Zumba and I was really into it because I, you know, I'm in my 50s and so I'm Mm -hmm. in front of the class acting like I'm 20, you know, (laughs) doing the things I wish I would have done when I was 20 on the dance floor, but was too shy to do, you know. So, and then I dislocated my knee. So there went that. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, in the there middle of class. There are dances that are not as impactful. Um, and and so you just kind of just go try different ones. There's tango. Um, there's, you know, like I said, there's blues. There's swing. There's um, the Latin dances and various Latin dances. There's, um, you, there's a lot of African dances. Um, there's a new one that I'm really falling in love with that comes out of Angola, and it's Kazomba. And it's a, it's a partner dance and it's a very close embrace partner dance. So the kind of way you would see tango being partnered very closely, Kazomba is too. It's, 
it's beautiful. Um, it's not overly flashy, but to, it's it's really lovely. Hmm. And it's and like I said, a great community of people that 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 come to Kazumba. Um, so you can find again, you can find different dances that, um, and I encourage you to try different styles. And for me, I don't necessarily have a favorite a lot because each dance that I dance brings out a different it you know it touches a different piece of my essence oh that's cool I love it I'm so glad you talked about that that just is something that's yeah. always wanted to do even with my husband I told him we should do ballroom dancing someday so mm-hmm. I love watching it on tv you know with that yeah. so um so what going back to the posture what would be like something that you would tell people on how to avoid you know you know what upper cross syndrome is right mm-hmm exactly so, so what would you say for people, like when I teach, I'm always like, let's strengthen the back and stretch the chest. You know, that's like kind of what mm-hmm. my focus, what tips would you give them to avoid, you know, furthering their progress or whatever in that area? Sure. Um, so really kind of underlining, understanding the alignment points, right? So your ears should be over your shoulders, your shoulders should be over your hips and your hips should be over um, your ankles, Right. So where is your weight in that? That's the first thing I would tell people is actually shifting their weight, whether they're standing or sitting, so they're actually stacked. So if you're standing, shift your weight so your weight is actually over your heels. So ideally, it should actually, you should start feeling that weight in the front of your heels, so not in the back, so your toes shouldn't come off the ground. That's that first part, right? Then, like you're saying, like having the chest open my only caveat to um really encouraging people to open up their chest is a lot of times they pull their shoulder blades together and they protrude their ribs so what i like Uh, people to think of is bringing their focus to their spines right and thinking that they have a string attached going up through the base you know all the way from their tailbone all the way up their spine and out the top of their head right because when i do that i say bring everything in towards the spine and up towards the ceiling. Okay. So it's like they're so elongating I, instead of just almost hyperextending their, their scapula. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's what I find is when I say lift everybody, you know, they, they peacock, right? So they're, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, am I, I'm better. I'm like, no, you're not. But if I think elongate, like think of the kind of that ballerina sort of, sort of posture, we all know that posture that allows their ribs to come in and up, that allows their head to come in and up. Um, and, and so I, I would say elongate your spine. Okay. As compared to lift. Okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Pull your head to the ceiling. That's what I have to tell my mom. Cause she walks, for, you know, forward. So mm-hmm. she like leans forward so much and it's yeah. like, Nope, lift your head to the sky, mom. Because that will also pull her weight back. And so, again, like if I'm sitting, to not have such a strong flexion or or hinging action in your hip. So lean back and actually find, put more of your weight on your sit bones and make sure, like, am I stacked? It's going to feel weird at first, even when you're pulling your weight back standing or sitting. Because all of a sudden you're like, this is new territory. And it almost feels like you're falling back, but you're not. Right. Um. And, and oddly enough, you don't really want to move. You're so present when you're actually stacked as compared to if I lean forward, I'm constantly in a go, 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 go mode because that's what we are as, as Americans. So if I can stack myself, I, I usually feel a sense of peace, a sense of ease, and I just, I just feel good. Like I've, I'm, I'm also just very present in what's happening around me. That makes sense because you have to focus on that stack. It reminds me, you just said something. So like when I'm meditating, okay, mm-hmm. oftentimes I find myself I, that I'm leaning forward. Mm-hmm. You know, and they always say when you're meditating to be elongated, you know, elongated spine, yep. but relaxed and comfortable. But when I'm in the, you know, in that zone, I'm, I find that by, I creep forward. So that's interesting that you said that. Okay, so I'm starting to run out of time here, um, but I wanted to ask you a few more questions. That is the kind of the fun part. Um, first of all, what is your like favorite accomplishment or claim to fame? 
So when I was, um, I think 10, maybe 11, I was hanging upside, upside down on, you know, those monkey bars that go in a, like a, like the rainbow. Uh, you know, monkey bars about. like a rainbow. No, but I know yeah, what monkey like, bars are. Okay. So anyway, I was laying upside down on a monkey bar and somebody took a picture and I'm in a magazine and in a British magazine. Oh, <laughs> all because I was playing on the monkey bars and, and having a ball all by myself. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> so that's like my one true claim for fame that, that I'm in a magazine. <laughs> oh, that is super cool. And in British, I mean, British magazine of all, of all things. Yes. So I'm an international star. Wow. I want to be an international <laughs> star. Lucky you, girl. So I know, right? what's your favorite healthiest habit? Oh, my favorite healthiest habit. Um, I would say laughter. Ooh, I like it. That's good. Um, yeah. what is, how about your favorite quote? Ooh, okay. So I have two. So my first one is the one that I, I is more my ruling, um, helps me rule my life and that is be the change. Ooh, I like that. So, yeah. So be the change you want to see in the world. And that really helps keep me present and grounded and keeps me focused because it's, it's a one thing is, am I in alignment to this? If I want to see kindness, if I want to see compassion, if I want to see caring, if I want to see love. I have to be those things. And am I being those things? Yeah, that's true. Um, how about yeah. your favorite food? Finger foods. Like, give me one. <laughs> um, anything in like a puff pastry. Ah. Um, yeah. Okay. What are you Finger most grateful foods. for? Oh, um, Lessons learned. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's how we move forward. Um, how about favorite movie? Gorillas in the Mist. Oh, I love that one with Sid. What's her name? Sigourney yeah. Weaver. Yeah, Sigourney Weaver. Oh, so yeah. good. Um, favorite so book. So sad, but oh, my favorite book is The Crystal Cave by Mary Stewart. Oh. And um, it is a historical fiction about Merlin and King Arthur. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm in a book club, so I'm always asking people for that. Um, <laughs> how about guilty pleasure? Oh, um, soft, fuzzy things. Oh, that's like me. I love soft, fuzzy things. That's so funny. I have a blanket that is so soft that I just mm. love snuggling it and ru rubbing yeah. it on my upper lip. Like mm -hmm. I probably did yep. when I was sucking my thumb as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I just crocheted a blanket that is soft and I just like, yeah, that, that wrapping and I'm just like, I, it's, it's so good. It feels so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> now that winter's here, especially. And exactly. then, Katrina, where can people find you? Um, they can find me either on Facebook under Katrina Rogers. You can find me under LinkedIn under the same name. Um, you can find me at my website at Katrina Rogers movement dot com. Those are those are some of the ways you can find me. OK, and we'll have links to all of that in the show notes so that people can just go ahead and jump on. And yes. click over there. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. You are absolutely lovely. And I love all the things that you're talking about. And I'm hoping that our listeners were able to take at least two different things that they can work on for the coming week. Yes. So, well, I really appreciate you having me. And, and thank you. Well, thank you. Have a super Thanksgiving, my dear. You as well. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Wow, wasn't that awesome, you guys? My tips for learning from Katrina are going to be to make sure that my posture is mindful when I'm sitting at my laptop, which means that I probably should invest in some sort of a rack to raise it up so that I'm able to have an 
elongated spine instead of leaning over my laptop all the time. The other thing is, is I'm going to find somewhere local that I can take a fun little dance class. That was awesome. So please go ahead and subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. If you have a friend that you think it would benefit, go ahead and shoot them over a link so they can listen to it too. And if you have time, please head on over and give us a rating and review so that we can have more people find this show and more women change their lives. Thank you so much and go out and make it a great day. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.